Today was a pretty good day. Had a writer's group meeting that was really, it was just like a lot of fun. It was good to see all of my uh, fellow writers, you know, talk to them, talk about our projects, what we got going on, what we've been watching, what we enjoy on, you know, TV and movies and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. One of my fellow writers in the writers group, and we follow each other on Twitter and everything, and he sent me a tweet. <laughs> And it was essentially a mock movie poster. I'm not going to tell you like what the poster was or whatever, but the title that was used on the poster is the same title of my work in progress. Not the comedy horror, it's my other script, my romantic comedy script. And he sent me you know, a tweet with this fake movie poster with this title. And I just sent him a reaction gif that was, you know, just a... You know, this woman, you know, with her eye twitching, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so because of that, I decided I want to share this story with y'all. I call this my J true sad Hollywood story. Because it, it's true, it really happened, and for me it's very sad. <laughs> you know, him sending me that tweet just made me think about it. So, here we go. My senior year of college, I took an independent study screenwriting course. I mean, essentially, I just had to write a feature film script. That was, that was the entire course. You know, I had to choose a professor in the film school to work with. And so I chose uh, screenwriter Rafael Lima. I loved Lima. He's just, you know, at the time, he was just the man in my eyes. I was just like, and he still is the man. But, you know, I was, I was looking at him just like, yo, like, I look up to you. I love what you do. Please notice me and love what I do. So I asked him to be my independent study instructor. He agreed. And I set about writing this script. The title of the script was If Love Dies. And I got that title from the trailer for Romeo Must Die. <laughs> there are a couple of, you know, quick action cuts and title cards in the trailer. And there are different ones. It's like, if honor dies. And one of the title cards, if love dies. And that just struck me. It struck me and it stuck with me. And I ended up using it as the title for this script that I was working on. So I write the script. Lima loves it. He's just like, this is, this is great. This is awesome. This is, you know, this is great. So I'm confident in the script. I let friends, classmates read it. Everyone is just like, oh, this is, this is bomb. This is, oh God, how did you come up with this? This is a great idea. At the time, I was also writing for the school newspaper, the Miami Hurricane. I don't know if I mentioned, I went to the U. So I was writing for the paper. I don't even know if at the time I was the editor. I, I can't believe that I don't really remember. I know that at one point I was the editor of the entertainment section, but if memory serves correctly, the, the editor-in-chief of the paper ended up getting ousted, and somehow I think I got put in his position. If memory serves correctly, I think I ended up being the, the editor of the paper. I really don't remember. I'm not lying to y'all. But in any case, I had the opportunity to interview actors for what was a new TV show at the time, and that TV show was called Son of the Beach. I don't even remember what network cable channel it, it aired on. It might have been something like FX, if FX was around back then. And Son of the Beach, it was like a, a parody of Baywatch. It's a show about had lifeguard and his team of lifeguards and you know, it was kind of like as silly as Baywatch already was. This show was kind of like a naked gun version of Baywatch, if that makes sense. Heavily into parody. So an opportunity presented itself for me to interview an actor from Son of the Beach. Even though they were presenting me with a list of actors, I could only interview one. Even though they were presenting me with a list of actors, I already knew who I wanted to interview. And it was Lila Arcieri. I didn't even have to look at the list. I was like, Lila Arcieri, that's, that's who I want to interview. Now, some of you may be asking, like, who is Lila Arcieri? Like, why, why were you so adamant about interviewing her? Lila Arcieri was known as the Vibrant Thing Girl. 
And this was around the time that the Vibrant Think video had dropped. Yes, kids, that's how old I am. <laughs> I was in school when Vibrant Thing dropped. She was just the standout like video girl. I mean, she's gorgeous. Oh, just beautiful. I mean, Q-Tip obviously thought so because he brought her back and really featured her in the next video, which was Breathe and Stop. But it was Vibrant Thing that really set it off. So I knew who she was based on her being in the Vibrant Thing video. And now she's got this starring role in this television series, Son of the Beach. And they're just like, hey, would you like to interview an actor for the newspaper? So I immediately, yes, Lila Arcieri. I want to interview her. So we did. It's a phone interview. I remember her just being, you know, just really nice, really kind. You know, she answered all my questions. But one of the questions that I asked her was something along the lines of, like, what's your dream role? What would you, what would you like to do? And also around this time, movies like The Matrix, The First Matrix, and Charlie's Angels, you know, had come out. Wire Foo and Black Leather, you know, was all the rage in, in action films at the time. And she mentioned that. She's just like, I'd love to, I'd love to have a kick-ass role in a film like The Matrix or Charlie's Angels or Crouching Tiger, because Crouching Tiger was also out around this time. So I just took note of that. And at the end of the interview, I told her, I was just like, hey, I'm a screenwriter. <laughs> and I think I got a kick-ass role for you in this script. I'd like to send it to you. She was like, yeah, sure, yeah, go ahead. She gave me the information for her manager, a gentleman by the name of Daryl Taja. And she was just like, here, you know, here's this information, send it to Daryl, he'll get it to me, boom, boom, boom. So. I sent the script to Daryl Taja. I don't remember how long it took, but he got back to me. He contacted me and he was just like, dude, I'm not gonna lie to you. I got the script and I wasn't gonna read it. <laughs> but he had like a pickup basketball game that got canceled. And he said that the game got canceled and he sat down in his living room and the script was sitting like on the table in front of him or whatever. So he decided to go ahead and pick it up and read it. And he was like, he couldn't put it down. <sighs> so this is what happened. <laughs> Daryl told me that he wanted to try to get this sold and made. He didn't want to represent me fully, but he agreed to hip pocket me. This was my introduction to the term hip pocket, which essentially meant he was representing me, but just on this. He wasn't bringing me on as a client. He was representing me on this. And really, you know, with the hope that things went well, if someone, you know, became interested and they bought it, then yeah, sure, he'd bring me on, you know, fully as a client. So Daryl said that he would shop it around. Another thing that Daryl did is he rewrote the script. I don't know to what extent he rewrote it, but he he told me that he, you know, made some changes. He changed the title and he registered that version of the script with the WGA, with himself listed as co-writer. <laughs> and he sent me like the WGA registration, you know, just to, you know, hey, you know, your name is, is on here as well. And that was cool and it, it certainly was. He didn't know that I had already registered the script with the WGA. So I wasn't, that's why I didn't freak out or, anything like, oh, he's trying to steal my, I didn't freak out about that. Cause I was just like, well, I already registered this like before you did. So it was all good. Daryl told me that he shopped the script around and he got some interest. Now remember he told me that he got interest from Live, who eventually became Artisan and someone else, you know, it's like one of those like smaller production studios. He's just like, you know, oh, this is, this is looking good. You know, people, people, you know, are digging this. This is looking good. This is looking good. And y'all, I just thought that I was going to finish school and have a script sold <laughs> at the same time. And my career in film was, was going to take off like straight from graduation, right? That's what I was thinking. That was, that's what was in my head. Then I get a call one day from Daryl and he's just like, Jay, I got some bad news. There is a script that's out there that is very similar to your script. And this script is written by an A-list screenwriter and they've got people like Will Smith looking at it. I was like, well, what, what, what does this mean? He's like, well, that script gets purchased. Your script is dead. And sure enough, that's what happened. The A-list screenwriter's script was purchased 
by a major studio attracted a lot of talent. When, when I read about this, like in the trades or whatever, Will Smith was definitely like one of the names that, that was thrown about. And yeah, like Daryl said, my script was, was dead. I was heartbroken. I was really heartbroken. That was the end of my relationship with Daryl. Like, you know, he, he had no, no reason to continue to, to, you know, stay in contact with me. So there was that. And, and it was, you know, several years later, you know, the movie went into production and, you know, it was coming out. And I remember people telling me, people who'd read my script, telling me, yo, I, I went to the movies, man, and, and there was a trailer for a movie that was almost like the script you wrote a few years ago. Yeah, in this trailer, it seemed like there was this scene that was similar to, you know, a scene that I, I read in your script, or this character seemed similar to, you know, this character. And people were just even like, are you sure that your script wasn't stolen? I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm 98% sure that my script was not stolen. Even though Daryl did like register the script in his name and the, the research that I did, the little research that I did, you know, Daryl had nothing to do with this project. You know, I didn't see how he was in any way connected to it. I seriously doubt that someone swiped the idea. It's an idea. And that's the thing, you know, ideas are a dime a dozen. So it didn't surprise me to learn that there was a similar idea <laughs> to what I'd written. I just, I honestly don't think that someone read my script and said, hey, hey, A-list screenwriter, we've got this idea. We, you know, we lifted this script. Why don't you write this? I don't think that that happened. But even still, like I said, my heart was broken. I was just like, wow. And the movie ended up coming out and the movie ended up being a complete smash hit, like international worldwide smash. <laughs> and y'all, I stopped writing. I seriously stopped writing for, for a while. I was just like, fuck this. I, I give up. I didn't write screenplays. I had no designs on writing novels. I don't even know what I was thinking at the time, but it wasn't, it wasn't writing. It wasn't movies. Even during that period, like I stopped going to the movies. There is there's a small period in like the, the early to mid 2000s where I didn't go to the movies, I didn't watch anything, I didn't pay attention to anything, Oscars, who knows? Like there's, there's, there's a stretch of time where it's just like I just ignored everything. That's how heartbroken I was. And it wasn't until I left Miami and moved to New York that my love for writing reemerged. But yeah, that was, oh my God, like I said, that was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking. Mm. I'm sorry. You're probably wondering what the movie, <laughs> what the movie is. So let me tell you how I came up with the idea for my script, If Love Dies. I like to write comedies, sometimes romantic comedies, men and women. Yeah. And one day I was just thinking, I was just like, okay, men and women, well, look, romantic couples. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to exclude anybody, but I was thinking men and women. Men and women break up all the time. But what is the most extreme way to break up with someone? The most extreme way? I was like, well, you kill them, right? I was thinking about how would that work? How can I have a couple break up but try to kill each other? And the idea came to me to make them assassins. So my idea, If Love Dies, was about a male-female assassination team who were also lovers who were going through a breakup. Well, the A-list script that was out there at the same time that apparently garnered the attention of stars such as Will Smith and eventually Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie was titled Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah. I still, to this day, have not seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I don't know what the similarities are, except I think, I think the Vince Vaughn character, someone was telling me that the Vince Vaughn character is very much like a character that was in my script. Additionally, like, you know, my script, they were a team, they worked together. Whereas in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I think the premise is they don't know, they don't know that, that the other is an assassin. But again, to this day, I've not seen it. I don't think that I will ever watch it. It's one of those things. 
I believe in what's known as the collective consciousness. Ideas are a dime a dozen. You come up with it and nine other people around the world come up with the same idea. And it's really just about who gets to the finish line first. They say no script is ever truly dead, but this is the one script that I don't know. I don't, I don't know that there's any way to revive it. Probably could. Enough time has passed, right? So I probably could like rewrite it, update it, start submitting it. But you know, at this point, I have so many other ideas that I want to explore. Do I really want to go backward? For as much as I love that script, I think it's a really great script. Even though I have improved as a writer, like noticeably, like, I mean, when I go back and I look at If Love Dies, I'm just like, ooh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this reads like a kid, you know, just like out of college. I have so many other ideas and so many other things that I want to do at this point. I don't know that it's worth going back to revisit that. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, that was my close brush with <laughs> success in this industry. And like I said, you know, it really, it really hit me. And I lost the love and the desire for, for a while. But I'm back in it, baby. I am back in it. Nobody's going to fucking hold me down this time. <laughs> so that is my J true sad Hollywood story. I hope my next Hollywood story has a Hollywood ending. 